Treasure Planet, Disney's 43rd animated feature film, made its debut all the way back in 2002, during what is known as Disney's post-Renaissance era. An adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's adventure novel Treasure Island, it follows the same premise except dwell in space. The film features the voices of a talented cast like Emma Thompson as Captain Amelia, and Martin Short as Ben, and a musical score by James Newton Howard who is basically a composition god. It received positive critical reception as well as an Academy Award nomination for Best Animated Feature and still has a large cult following today. But despite its overall popularity, the movie was a box office bomb, grossing only $110 million worldwide compared to its $140 million budget. An article in the LA Times even listed it as one of the most expensive box office flops of all time. Why is it then that a movie still a fond memory in the minds of many people did so poorly? While there's no one factor that probably contributed to this film's downfall, we'll be looking at some of the three major elements that probably contributed to the box office flop that it was. The first one being the fact that the target audience, being children and teens, probably were unfamiliar with the topic at hand. If you were to ask them at the time, most of them probably wouldn't even know what Treasure Island was, considering that it's a classic novel that was written a long time ago. That combined with the fact that it was turned into a sci-fi category makes it a risky film to start with. The second thing that probably contributed was the rise of computer animated films, such as Pixar Animation Studios, another Disney company that began to gain popularity around the same time, with Monsters Incorporated coming out just the year before. While these two things are alone are enough to cause a film to be a little at risk ahead of time, it was probably the mishandled marketing that contributed to its downfall the most. If you were to compare Treasure Planet's marketing campaign to that of Lulu and Stitch, a movie by the same company that came out just a year before, the difference is just staggering. Lulu and Stitch's marketing campaign is probably the most famous Disney has ever been able to produce, with their main character Stitch, the little blue alien, making a debut in our previously classic films such as Beauty and the Beast and Ariel coming in, flying around, destroying scenery is pretty staggering and gets you interested in the film that's about to come out. Compare that to Treasure Planet's marketing campaign, which was far too conservative. No wonder it didn't succeed very well and have a high box office turnout. Despite its monetary failure, Treasure Planet is still proven to be a very good movie having itself being deemed as one of Disney's hidden classics among fans. It's still very prominent in many people's childhood memories and combined with its interesting story and beautiful 2D animation, it has truly earned a title as one of Disney's hidden classics. While the company might be moving away from 2D animation, if they ever were to go back and remake any of their films, this would be the one I would want to have redone most.